I also like pan um, Africanism, but Game of Thrones is definitely a pan European show. Sure. <laughs> Peace and blessings, kings and queens. Got Crush TV right here inside of the Ankh Wellbeing Centre, Shepherd's Bush, London, standing next to my brother, you know, my brother, Tahaka, yeah, who, among many other things, yeah, is an author, yeah, you know what I'm saying, a writer, and these kinds of things. So that's what we want to talk to him about very, very quickly today. So you're writing a novel, yeah? Yep. I'm writing a novel, um, uh, fantasy fiction epic, to be fair. Go fantasy to fiction epic. Yeah, yeah. I African mean. fantasy fiction epic. Okay. So we have to make it clear. This is, um, I'm not sure, I wouldn't say it's the first of the genre, yeah. because I'm sure there's been plenty out there before. Right. But this is me drawing on inspiration. You know, I have to keep it real, you know, I'm a boy of Jamaican heritage yes. growing up here in the West. So yes. this inspiration is drawn from all over the place. Right. But, you know, we'll get into it throughout the interview. But obviously, growing up reading fantasy fiction, you're yeah. looking for the reflection of yourself and thinking, where can I find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. having someone be going to Saturday school and learning about our history and learning yes. about our culture, seeing King Shaka Zulu and all that yes. from a young age, I'm like, yo, this is this is this is source quality. Do you know what I mean, it's yes, quality yes, source yes. stuff to write yes. any story from. So yes, yes, I've yes. always been inspired to write that. Story. Right. So you're, so you're writing something at the moment. I don't, I don't know how much you can say, yeah, but, no, but, but 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 all right, cool. But so you, you can give us maybe a name and and, and it's based in Mali. Yes, Mali, in the Mali Empire, yeah? Across Africa, to be fair. Okay, it's okay. A, it is, like I say, it's an epic, so that's why it's taken quite a while to um, write. And so I'll say the release date is to be confirmed, yeah. publishing date to be confirmed, because I am just, um, I'm really still building up this entire world, but right. it's based across the entire continent of Africa, a continent that resembles Africa. It's right, not going to okay. quite... So, yeah, there's, yeah, there's right. quite a little tricks to it. But, um, yeah, um, I've been writing it for a, a little while now. It's uh, I can't give you a name, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I can give you, ba the basis of the outline is that yeah. there is basically several kingdoms across Africa, as we know there was yes. prior to the um, era of colonization. Yes. And these kingdoms are existing. Yes. And there's going to be an event yes. which is going to get these kingdoms interacting with one yes. another. Yes, yes, and yes. for the good and bad, yes. you know, there might be some kingdoms from the outside which they might have to deal with, you know. Okay. So, so it's, 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 yeah, I don't want to give away too much. That's cool. I'm talking, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I don't envy you because yeah. as a writer myself, they, they, you know, they might have ideas that come when you put them down. Then when it gets to the, the, the process of seeing that and getting to the finishing, is it can be a long thing. But well, we get that, you know what I'm saying? But I want to ask you, like, why did you pick, well, are, are you basing it for, for primarily in, in Mali or, but like, so what, what was the inspiration behind that specifically? Um, I suppose I knew a little bit about Mali history, having been, been really about it from um, obviously looking into Islamic history within Africa so I knew a little bit about uh, Mali but then I drew like the stories that came to me were very inspirational and I've, I've been looking to do a story in Africa for a while and I just thought about doing something in Ethiopia because I knew about Ethiopian history I thought about doing something in South Africa right, right. but when I got Mali and I looked at like the history of a uh, Mali and sort of the medieval period of Mali and yes. the Malian Empire, of the the hierarchy of the the Mansa, the Farin class, the Ferrari class is yes. what they're called, the Kelekuns, the warheads, yeah, right. and all the, and the Wangara, these merchant okay. chiefs that walked around. There. So these roles almost wrote themselves. Okay. And so once we found them, like, okay, this story is right in itself. And okay. and then because I had all that knowledge of those other um, kingdoms, I was like, I have to incorporate the interaction right, right. somehow. So, so this, this this to me sounds like an obvious evolution. Mm -hmm. You've grown up learning about African history. Yeah. You you become a creative writer. That becomes your inspiration. And we're surrounded by, um, you know, this that kind of yeah right right now. Do you know what I'm saying? But we're also in this environment surrounded by um, television and film mm -hmm. that draws on European history and does all kinds of different things with it. So we're seeing the the the, the, the kind of you know an, another version of that, so to speak. But why do you think that the obvious transition that you're making as a creative has not been taken by you? Like why is this? Why don't we know of other African fantasy fiction? I think fantasy fiction is hard to write, like we've been saying. Being an author is incredibly difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think sitting down to write a, an actual good storyline is very difficult. I think also yeah. the reality is yeah. being a black author in the UK or in the West, mm -hmm. fantasy fiction or otherwise is very difficult. Mm -hmm. or, um, publishers will look at you and say, who's going to read that? Who's going to No matter what genre it is, they're yeah. always going to ask you who's going to read that. And so a lot of black authors get edited. Even if they wanted to start doing fantasy fiction, mm -hmm. their, pub their, their publishers will push them into another direction. So you're a good writer, maybe write one of these novels first because they're selling. Right. And if you get pushed into sort of a direction right. and it will take you a while to work back across <laughs> into that fantasy fiction um, um, area. But um, yeah, so I think 
the system that we live in is a big right, part right, of it. Right. But also, it's very difficult. You can't take that away from it. So, obviously, that part, part of what's inspired this conversation is the fact that we're in Game of Thrones Game season. Game of Thrones! Season. Thrones yeah. Right. And you know what I mean? And, and so, uh, there's a conversation happening at the moment about the lack of black presence in it. I mean, we'll we, we, we do that another time. But what I want to ask you now, yeah, is what do, what do you think George R. R. Martin basing this entire narrative, this entire epic off of um, European medieval history does for European culture, mm. yeah? And, and, and what is the absence of that kind of creative work coming out of our own culture yes. not doing for us? 100%. I mean, that's powerful. I mean, it elevates the uh, culture. I mean, and George R. R. Martin, but a whole load of others in, in that sort of vein. So the other day it was, um, I was doing a show when someone said 300 is the best movie ever. And it's sort of this film about 300 Greeks taking an order for need. And it's yeah. sort of, it's elevating the West all of these sorts of shows in that sort of genre of you know, historical fiction or or, med or or these fantasy fiction, it's always about, you know, you have this grand old wizard who's usually a white man with a big bear and he's wise and you have this white boy who's a farm boy who becomes the saviour of the world. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's all giving these, uh, and it's all based on sort of a lot of um, Western sort of, you know, even um, sort of language and world are based a lot of very Western interpretations yes, of the yes. Bible and you have um, sort of Western philosophy running through all of this. I mean, in Game of Thrones, quite a lot of Nietzsche and this idea of killing God is within it. Do you know what I mean? So they put all of their philosophy and their ideas into their fiction and they, so it's definitely always about elevating and pushing their, their, um, their view of the world up. So yeah, I mean, I also like pan um, Africanism, but Game of Thrones is definitely a pan European show. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean, definitely. Yeah. So how do you, how do you think um, fantasy, fantasy fictions like yours will help to serve um, us and our people, our, our culture, our history? I think we saw the Wakanda effect, and for me personally, I feel like even that was it was very surface level. We didn't go in deep. What's Wakanda like? Who who are the Wakandans? What's the culture? All of that. It was very surface level. And like, well, we saw what it done for our people. The people were hyped. Everyone was in the cinema wearing their traditional clothing again. It gave a feeling of pride. Wow. And I think if people were seeing that more often, day in, day out, yeah. seeing different sort of um, kingdoms in history and also modern shows of examples of in the science fiction aspect. Mm -hmm. um, it just boosts confidence and belief in the, in ourselves and actually inspires ourselves to, um, you know, how many scientists or engineers have gone out there watching things like Incredible Hulk or Iron Man or those sorts of yes, things, yes, yes. you know? So, um, you know, those sorts of careers are not necessarily being thought about by our young people, but how many roles are there being shown of the young people yes, in yes. those roles? Do you know what? I've just remembered something. There's a sister by the name of Chiemeka Nicely who has written a book called The Masterpiece. It's, okay. And, I, and I've, I'm halfway through it. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a 19-year-old. She's a okay. Yeah, okay. sister. Who I like, grew up in a, in a community. Nice, I grew up watching nice. her. Okay. So big up, I, I, I just, as we were speaking, I just remember that. Yeah, just had to yeah, big her yeah, up. Yeah, sure. She'll make her nasty because she has done it. So okay. Yeah, I'll you know what I'm saying? So check, check that out. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. But where can people get to see? Because I know people are going to want to know where they're going to be able to get this book when it's finally completed and it comes out. So where can they stay in contact with and tune with your movements? Um, just check me out on, um, I'd say, check me out on Instagram find Scattered Mind Show on Instagram or check me out on YouTube the Scattered Mind Show as well because if you follow me there eventually I'll make the announcement there I'm going to make um, my own YouTube account it's not sure how I'm going to release it I'm going to see how publishers react to it once it's finally ready however I'm not necessarily hanging on or waiting I have call it a lot of confidence I've been writing this for years you know what I mean and planning it for years I've got a lot of confidence in it and I'd be happy to leave, release a the first few chapters as an audio book okay. online um, and to a public um, if people are interested so that will eventually be happening I've got a lot of ideas for how we're going to do the audio book how we're going to B b break ground with audiobooks okay. to be fair um, so w yeah that's going to come so we'll stay hey, a bit of a bit. I'm excited family I don't know about you you know but I'm excited I'll stay tuned yeah and no doubt once the book what, any developments coming with this book yeah will be featured on Got Kush TV so do stay tuned look out for Brother Tahaka you get me you ain't got nothing if you ain't got Kush believe that <laughs> peace yeah. Hey yo, it's Swiss. My name is JJ Bola. This is Shakara. Hi sister. My name is Empress Mani. What's up? It's the world changer Michele Mean. You're locked onto Got Kush. Got Kush. Got Kush. Got Kush TV, the conscious platform for all conscious people. Stay tuned.